Radar and ARPA Displays, Part 9. Objectives for the radar displays. First, I'm going to list the five radar displays. Second, I'm going to describe the inputs for each display. And third, discuss advantages and disadvantages of each radar display. The five radar displays. We only have one unstabilized radar, and that's going to be the unstabilized head up relative motion radar. The rest are going to be stabilized, meaning that they have a gyro in them. We have two stabilized relative motion radars. We have a north up and we have a course up. We also have two stabilized true motion radars. These will also be north up and course up. The inputs for these five radars. For the unstabilized head up relative motion radar, there are no inputs. You may have a global satellite navigation system, you may have AIS, and you may have a chart overlay. For the four stabilized radars, they will have a gyro to stabilize the display. I'll talk about that in just a minute. For ARPA and True Motion, they will need a speed log, like a dual axis Janus array system. They may too have a global satellite navigation system and AIS, and they too may have a chart overlay. first radar, unstabilized head-up relative motion radar, this radar was the first radar that was invented. Personally, I love this radar because it has no inputs that have errors that will mess anything up. I call it a plug-and-play radar. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of this radar. The advantages, the heading flasher always points to zero, zero, zero degrees which allows your visual orientation is going to match your radar orientation. If we're navigating down a river and as we look out our bridge window, our visual orientation is going to match the radar orientation. Disadvantages, unless we're heading due north, it does not match our navigation chart since most navigation charts are have a north up display. When our ship yaws from a following current or following seas or alters course, the contacts and the land masses will smear. Third, it has relative bearings. There's no true bearings on this radar, so these relative bearings must be converted from a relative bearing to a true bearing to do any type of plotting. Having inputs such as a global navigation satellite system or AIS, these will produce course over ground and speed over ground, which does not represent collision avoidance. I just mentioned on the unstabilized head up relative motion radar that they have relative bearings and those need to be converted to a true bearing. This is how you accomplish it. You have to get the relative bearing. I chose 0, 4, 5 degrees. Then you have to add the ship's heading. And I chose 1, 5, 0 degrees. You add those two together and the true bearing will be 1, 9, 5 degrees. Let's talk about the stabilized radars. We'll talk about the two relative motion stabilized radars. First is a stabilized north up relative motion radar. The advantage is, is that it has a gyro to stabilize the radar. So course alterations 
or yawing of your vessel does not smear the contacts and land masses. It has true bearings. You don't have to do that relative bearing plus a ship's heading to get a true bearing. Your orientation of land masses matches a navigation chart. And stabilized relative motion allows for assessment of risk of collision. Disadvantage, your visual orientation may not match your radar orientation. If you're looking out your bridge window and you're navigating down a river going in this direction, the radar says you're going in this direction. Loss of your gyro, the radar reverts display to head up. That's why I think everybody should learn on an unstabilized head up relative motion radar. If you lose your gyro, you know how to use the radar. The second stabilized relative motion radar is a stabilized course up relative motion radar, similar to the unstabilized head up relative motion radar. Since we have a gyro, the course alterations or yawing of your vessel does not smear the contacts and the land masses. Like the north up radar, it also has true bearings. Do not have to do any conversion. And your visual orientation matches your radar orientation. You're navigating down a river, looking out your bridge window, your visual orientation will match your radar orientation. Disadvantages, unless we're heading north, it does not match a navigation chart. Also, if we lose a gyro, the radar reverts to that head up unstabilized relative motion radar display. And on many course up radars, you may need to reset after a course change. So after you do a course change, you have to hit a reset button to get your heading flasher to line up on the original course. Let's talk about the two true motion radars. The first one, stabilized north up true motion radars. They still have gyros. So there's no smearing when a boat changes course or yawing of the vessel. What true motion does, there's no relative motion. So what we're gonna see, we're gonna see the aspect, the course and speed of the other vessel. For this to happen, we, beside a gyro, we're also going to need a speed log. So we're seeing the E to M of the triangle. We're seeing the contacts, true course and speed. Land masses stay fixed on the radar. So what's happening, we're gonna start right down here on the radar and we're gonna track across this radar. Since we're stabilized, we still have true bearings. Disadvantages. True motion does not give an easy representation of risk of collision. Again, if we lose our gyro, this radar is going to revert back to an unstabilized head up relative motion radar. Like the course up radar, you may have to hit a reset button. As we track across this radar, you may have to hit a reset to bring us back down to here again. Some of the newer radars will automatically do that. And this radar will orient with a navigation chart. The second true motion radar, stabilized course up true motion radar. This one still has a gyro, freezes the radar, so there's no smearing during course changes and speed changes. It still shows the true motion, the aspect or the course and speed of the vessel. So it's going to show the E to M of a navigation plotting triangle. Land masses and navigation aids are fixed. They stay in one place and we track across the radar screen. Still have true bearings. 
unless we're going north, the radar orientation may not align with the navigation chart. Like the rest of the stabilized radars, if we lose our gyro, the, this radar is going to revert back to an unstabilized head up relative motion radar. Like the course up radar, you may have to hit a reset button. As we track across the radar, we may have to hit that reset button to bring us back to our starting point. A lot of new radars will automatically do that for us. And since we're on true motion, it doesn't give us a good representation of risk of collision. So to review my objectives, I listed the five radar displays, the unstabilized head up relative motion radar, the stabilized north up relative motion radar, the stabilized course up relative motion radar, the stabilized north up true motion radar, and the stabilized course up true motion radar. We described the inputs for these radars. The only one that doesn't have an input is the unstabilized. The rest of them will have a gyro and maybe a speed log. Then we discussed the advantages and the disadvantages of each of those radar displays.